Alright guys, so I haven't made a video in a while and everybody's been, well, PMing me to make one. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about doing, uh, I guess, no engine landings or a dead stick. A uh, couple things to take into account here. If you're more than like 10 to 15 miles away from your home base or any airfield for that matter, you're probably not going to make it, uh, depending on your altitude. Uh, we'll talk about some key features and situations that you might need to dead stick the plane and some situations where you won't be able to make it. Um, if you guys know anything about the F-16, is that it's probably one of the most aerodynamic, aerodynamically unstable aircraft that's out in the uh, inventory right now. So, if you do get an engine failure for whatever reason, uh, you're more than likely not going to make it unless, like I said earlier, with, you're within 10 miles of the airfield. Uh, key things to take into account here of general aviation, is that airspeed equals energy and energy equals life. Alright, that's a very key note to take into account is that if you don't have any altitude you're probably not going to have enough energy to make it back. Other things to take note about the F-16 is that it runs off of hydraulics and electronics uh, so if you don't have hydraulic power and you don't have the flight computers you're not going to be able to control the airplane of which the engine provides power for both. Uh, you do have a limited backup, what's called the EPU, the emergency power unit. It's uh, supplied by fuel of hydrazine, and it gets you roughly about 20 minutes of uh, electricity and hydraulic time for your A-systems. Um, some things to also take into account here is that your normal hydraulic system that's powered by the B-system on the airplane is not available with the engine not functioning. Uh, so in order to drop the gear, you have to use the pneumatic bottles. Uh, that's also powered. That also powers a jet fuel starter as well. Alright, so you get one try to make it to the airfield once the landing is assured, then drop your gear, uh, not before because you'll lose your glide ratio. Alright, I have a basic uh, basic scenario loaded up here. We'll go and load into the game and then we'll see what happens. Alright guys, we're loaded into the pit uh, and I'm on the runway. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off and we're going to fly up to about 10,000 feet and then we'll take a look at some of the flight dynamics of the plane. Uh, once the once the engine has quit, all right. As you can see, I have weapons loaded on the plane, and uh, this can really hurt you in in the long run if you're car carrying external stores such as uh, a fuel tank or uh, bombs or stores or something of that sort. Okay. We'll go and do a rolling departure, and we'll go and climb up to uh, 15,000 feet, about 10 miles away from the airfield, and I'll catch you guys there. So let's assume a couple key uh, notes here uh, that uh, we just did a unrestricted climb up to, uh, we're going to go up to 15,000 feet. I'm going to keep the burner until we hit about 10 miles. I'm going to keep the uh, speed around 350, which should be about 0.7 Mach, which is about here. I'm going to maintain a 5 degree climb, and then uh, I'll kill the engine, and then we'll try to make it back to the base. At 15,000 feet, we should have plenty of energy and altitude to make it. There's 500 feet to go, and we're leveling off. Plug in a little bit of burner, pick up some speed, and then we'll go and kill the engine. At uh, 10 miles, like I said earlier. Now, this profile is uh, not an exact science, so 
Alright. We'll go and kill the throttle. And I'll cut the fuel as well. Warning, 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 warning. Alright, so first thing you're going to notice is that we're dropping airspeed. And, um, some things are going to go dead here. Alright, so. Warning, 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 warning. We just lost our EPU. We're doing a 180 reversal back to the base. And at this time, we'd be declaring an emergency to the tower. The HUD is a uh, key feature to have, although it's not a necessity. You can always use the general console here uh, for your SA. So, first thing about general aviation is that you're going to try and maintain a glide, and you're going to try and select uh, the airfield that you're going to. The next, uh, after that, you would be attempting to restart the engine. Uh, after you analyze the situation, you understand what's going on. So, depending on what's happening, we know we have fuel. Uh, we can go and take a look at the engine panel or the, uh, the warning panel here and see what's going on with the aircraft. Next, we can look at the engine panel here, look at the uh, the RPM, the FTIT, and so on and so forth, and make a determination if we can restart the engine. If we're uh, if we're unable to at that time, then we're just going to go and proceed with the uh, with the procedure back to the airfield. All right. So next, you want to trim. Uh, down to a glide speed and F-16 is like I said a very unstable aircraft so you want to maintain anywhere from uh, about 150 to about 250 knots anything above that if you can make the airfield is good uh, but if you can keep the airfield that you want to make it in with a flight path marker which is pictured here in the center of the HUD uh, within the uh, field of regard of the HUD and then you should be able to make it at 10,000 feet we have a lot of energy and a lot of time so let's go ahead and start talking about some things. Altitude. Altitude. There goes our 10,000 feet warning. Uh, we have absolutely zero uh, avionics at this time. We have no DED. We have no MFD. Uh, both MFDs, what we would normally have would be a working radio. Uh, it wouldn't show any of the frequencies here. If I had the radio enabled, it should work. Okay. Uh, some things to do if you're within glider within glide of an airfield is that you want to line up to an active runway of any direction uh, that you can make it to and you want to make sure that the plane is in a pretty clean configuration okay we're going to go into emergency dump all the stores even though we don't have any and we're going to go and accelerate down to 300 knots I have the airfield in sight and the landing is assured uh, granted that I can make it there I'm going to be landing on the uh, on the left runway which should be 02 left uh, based off the heading marker and it's a visual approach okay couple key things to note here is that don't lower the gear above uh, 300 knots so we want to maintain that with the speed brakes speed brakes are actuated And we're going to go and drop the gear. You're going to notice that we're decelerating pretty rapidly. And we should be on glide path now. Try to maintain the flight path marker at the uh, threshold of the runway. And you can go and retract the speed brakes now. Speed brakes are back out, and we're going to try and flare it and basically stall the aircraft on the runway. And that's how you dead stick to F-16. Alright, the next scenario, uh, we'll go and take back off, and then we'll talk about some things. Alright, engine failure number two, uh, on the rollout or after VX, okay, or VR, which is rotate. Uh, pretty pretty much same situation as earlier. We're going to be simulating an engine failure on the departure end of the, of the uh, takeoff. 
Uh, granted that we make a turnaround point that we can um, make it back to the base, and we'll go and attempt that. All right. Power's in, nose wells off. Looking for 140 on the road seats. Here's 140. Gears up, pause it right. All right, let's simulate engine failure time now. Warning, 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 warning. Almost immediate knee-jerk reaction. We're going to do a 180 reversal back to the active runway. And we're shooting for glide speed here while turning around. Caution, altitude, Caution. Warning, altitude. warning, warning, warning. Granted, we can make it back. Pretty slick configuration. We're going to be dropping the gear now. Pointing at the threshold of the runway. Put the 5 degree marker on the pappies. Flight path marker at the threshold. We're on glide slope, 180 knots. Looks good. Once we get over the runway, we'll deploy the speed brakes and attempt to basically stall the aircraft on the runway again. There we go, coming in a little fast. And that's how you do a 180 reversal on departure.